Hey everybody, welcome to the Mystics of Texas. Today we are discussing, sometimes uh, it throws people for a loop whenever we uh, I express to them that we are a transmitter and a receiver. And to understand that, we transmit our thoughts, and thoughts are things. Thoughts can turn into actions. They can turn into emotions. They can be happy, sad, upset. And you, as a receiver, can pick those up. Uh, if I think about my brother, uh, sometimes he's calling me a few minutes later. Sometimes when I think of someone... I will hear from them in the near future, uh, get an email, a text, a phone call, something. Uh, when we send out our thoughts, thoughts are things. Thoughts are a frequency. And, and how we communicate with people resonates inside of them as their own receiver. And to get that point across, sometimes that just goes whew, right over somebody's head. And I think that is uh, one of the reasons why we're here today is just to briefly touch on that subject is how to start recognizing that we are receivers, we are transmitters, we do have an effect, positive and negative, on the energies and vibrations that we send through our transmitter and into someone else's receiver. Gil, how the heck are you today, sir? <laughs> I am well, thank you, brother. I'm so glad you're joining us, and you are always so much fun to discuss things with. And uh, to tell someone or to have a discussion with someone and talk about the power of frequency and the power of resonance and what that means uh, can be challenging. Uh, if I had not ever been introduced to that idea before, how would you address it to me? Um. I would start with telling you that everything in life is vibration. The moment we are speaking about life, we're speaking about vibration. And vibration is movement. If we stop moving, we stop vibrating and we stop living. And again, we're living in a complex, multi-field, woven, spheres and fields of vibrational frequency and every field has a core seed vibrational frequency that will determine the uh, vibration of that field and therefore the level of intelligence of that field it is really a form of light and even science today has been uh, proving it scientifically that every physical thing is a coagulated, congealed light, form of light, uh, which then translates into energy and vibration. Um, everything is a wave and it is a particle. And when waves and particles dance together, they create fields of vibrational frequency. That is well, well said. And when you think about frequency and resonance, when I think about frequency and resonance, that is always such a big, huge, massive topic. Because like Gil said, is everything is frequency or everything is light. Everything is moving at a certain pitch. The way the sound is coming in, if you put it where you can see the sound, the troughs and crest of our voice is coming across. You go back to that old saying, you know, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? Man, that's a really complicated question because you can get so deep into the whole way life is structured, and was there even a tree there to begin with? I mean, who knows if there's really a tree there, because it's a vibration of the light, and then if it falls, there's a sound. But everything's made up of space, so really a tree is 99.999% not there. It's only air. It's empty space. Like, most of the universe is made up of empty space. So is it really the empty space that brings mass? Well, what you're saying is very, that's a, a very interesting point of uh, resonance and frequency because uh, we think in this material world that everything is, is so physical when in fact our bodies themselves are mostly space. Yeah. And how we, per and, and how we perceive them is based on the frequency and the uh, resonance and 
in our own very limited scope of sensing this reality. So uh, that is fascinating that you mentioned just that. And that each of our cells, each of our body, everything in our body is, is producing its own frequencies. Our mind produces its own frequency. Uh, our togetherness produces its own energy and frequency. And uh, when I see, you know, all of the different people that are here today, that each one of the hugs produces their own different frequency. Uh, when I shake someone's hand, that, that produces this, its own energy, its own resonance that resonates out. Uh, whether or not uh, you give someone a meaningful embrace that you can, you can feel and you feel the energy versus just a hug and passing, uh, those are two big different things and big dramatic uh, differences in the ener energy and the ener uh, the the field, the whole magnet, magnetic field around it. So the power of frequency is all around us, especially what we can, uh, cannot even see. Uh, it's everywhere. Our voices, our, the light, our love, our, our understanding, all of those things radiate. They radiate frequency. And as a transmitter and a, as a receiver, uh, we have to be open and to understand that we are receivers of information, that we are receivers of different people's energies and their vibrations. It's just like me and Trey have said many times uh, how we like to comment on how the energy levels change when certain people walk into a room. Yeah, Why does that happen? It's because their frequency is radiating out to everyone else. Why is it that whenever you walked out here earlier, everybody felt a big, oh, Gil's here. We love Gil. We want to hug and see Gil. Yeah, everybody's standing in line to hug Gil. Uh, well, the whole energy changes just from the vibrations of, of you coming into the yard. Same way with Trey whenever he walks into the house when I haven't seen him for a few days. Ah, there he is. There's my brother. Same way when I haven't seen Dante in a while. Uh, the, the moods and frequencies are different. Very different, all still positive. But those are recognizable things that you can not only understand with your intellect, but you can also feel in your heart. Well, that's something that if you have somebody that's close to you, like you and I, if one of us is having an off day and we walk in the room, it's instantly noticeable. It's a palpable kind of thing. It's like, oh, well, Kevin was in an off mood today and what, what can we do? Or, you know, Trey's in an off mood or Gil... Well, I don't know if Gil's ever in an off mood today. <laughs> like rock, he's sturdy over there. You know, that, that is a good point because whenever you do know somebody really well, or a lot of times you don't know them, you can walk into a room and instantly feel if it is a good space to be in or not. And that goes to the heart of what we're talking about, the resonance and frequency of, of people and energies around us and how important it is to recognize that we are a receiver for those things. And we can let that uh, resonate inside of us in a positive or negative way. Or as I always say, who but it out, just pass on by. But uh, we have to be aware of those things. You know, a good example of that is just language. When we speak to one another, anybody that's communicating, only about 20% of what is said in a conversation was the actual words. Everything else is all nonverbal communication. What you're wearing, what, you know, how the cadence and tone of the voice, it doesn't really matter as much of what someone says, it's how they say it can produce a completely different vibe. I mean, there's great speakers out there all over the world that if you give the same speech to someone else, it would have almost no impact, but it's the way that they care themselves. It's how they get their message across. They use a different tone, a different frequency to zone people in and connect where other people just have not tapped into that ability. I'm not going to say that they can't. It's that they haven't tapped into that ability because I think all humans have this gift of communication and some have just worked and expounded upon their gift to make it better. And just like anything else, some people are really good at things and some people have to work extra hard at it. That is, uh, that's all part of the different layers of frequency. Uh, and there's so many different layers of frequency. 
and so many different layers of how that resonates inside of us. And being a transmitter and a receiver, we, we need to be cognizant of, of how we transmit our vibes and cognizant of how we receive them. And that is the point of this video today. Uh, for people that do not believe you are a receiver or believe you are a transmitter, just go into the other room with anybody you love and start saying uh, something really nasty that's been on your mind for a while that you're harboring ill feelings and see if that does not transmit a different vibe into the room. Uh, it certainly will. And if you go into the room with the intent of love and you express an absolute understanding and forgiving heart in the room, that will definitely change the vibe. So we are transmitters. We are receivers. Let's just, you know, the whole purpose of this today was to introduce that idea and to say, let's be aware. Let's be aware of ourselves. Anything you would like to say else, Kim? Yes, awareness is key. And thank you for what you have uh, brought forth, Trey. That's a, a very valid point. Uh, not so much what you say, but how you say it. that. Uh, Again, it's, it's important, and the awareness that you mentioned, uh, Kevin, is, is, is crucial. Um, to be aware, uh, uh, first of all, of our being, and then of our feeling, and then of our thinking, and then how do we express that? How do we express it in a way that will bring a vibration that will create openings, that will create uh, receptivity? that will create relaxation, that people around us will feel safe. These are the, some of the key attitudes that are beginning to shift our emanations and vibrations. Um, and because we're all receivers and transmitters, there is an input and output of energy constantly, whether we're aware of it or not. When we're not aware of it, a lot of things can go wrong quote unquote, because we can receive dark ripples from sources that are constantly bombarding us here, or we can align and attune to a deeper, higher vibration. And now we become conduits to a much more um, intelligent vibration that comes from love. Like you said, Kevin, this is a key ingredient in, in, in the process learning how to attune ourselves, how to align ourselves and shift the station of, of, of consumption and giving. We're constantly consuming vibrational frequency through our senses. But the five senses are attuned to the frequencies of separation. And when we understand that, this is the key, one of the key ingredients of that program that we spoke about before to become aware of it. The heart is attuned to the vibrations of unity. And that's why it is one of the key ingredients in emanation. When you're in your heart, you begin to emanate the frequencies from the core of unity. And that starts to bring people together. And the fields of resonance are building up. And when you are in separation, there, is, there are fields of interference. And, and you can feel that. You can feel, and it's important that we will resensitize ourselves to that. Like Kevin said, because most of us are going desensitized to vibration and we become automations. So. That was wonderfully stated. Well, I would like to say, I don't know if we're being so desensitized to vibrations. I think we're being more and more attuned and accustomed to being tuned in and programmed to a different set of vibrations that takes us off of our natural spiritual path. So I don't think that we're losing that. I think that we're being redirected down a more harmful path. And it's been happening for a long time. And now that technology has become so prevalent, we're just on an exponential curve and something has to break it. So I don't think we're losing that. I think we're getting better and better at forcing the masses to move in the direction that they want to go. We're being herded, much like cows or sheep. The people that make everything, that control everything, know how to get inside our heads. That's why advertising works. 
I mean, if advertising didn't work, they wouldn't be doing it. It's like television. It's called programming for a reason. There's a reason that all these apps, Facebook, Instagram, all of them, they have all these algorithms that keep us involved, that keep us engaged, and they know how to keep us coming back for more. I mean, how many people get up in the morning, they don't think of something spiritual. They say, oh, I want, how many likes do I have on this or that? They check their phone before they do anything else because that phone, the program that it's emanating out from it receiving the cell phone signal and all the other messages that are coming in, they've tuned into those frequencies to tap into those things that we're born with. So they're just redirecting. I don't think it's something we've lost. I think it's something that we're being shepherded and herded away from. Yeah, I like both of y'all's points on that because they were very, very, very insightful. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of uh, angles to get exactly to the to the truth of the matter. Thank y'all for joining us. Uh, we are going to continue all of these wonderful deep conversations and and how to understand ourselves, how to find ourselves, how to better ourselves, how to better this world. And that always starts with right here inside, and it starts with going over these sort of topics. And so thank y'all for joining us. You can find us at themysticsoftexas.com and on practically every other outlet from Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, and of course YouTube. Have a good day.